We had a gentleman the other day who came to us with his rabbit, who he'd actually kept for two years, frozen. Um, he actually wanted to uh, make something from the skin. Hello there, I'm Kevin. I am a pet cremator. I run a, an individual pet crematorium called Dignity, based in Hampshire. And uh, here helping me today, I've got my lovely dog Brax. Cremating a pet isn't about flames, it's about sheer heat. So um, our pet cremators, the chambers themselves, run to about eight, 900 degrees centigrade, but can go higher. And what happens is the, the body of the animal is reduced down to their skeletal remains. So when you open the chamber at the end of the cremation, what you see is actually the calcified bones of the pet and they're withdrawn and taken out. And then there's another process called cremulation that not many people know about. And that's the process where the bones are reduced down into the ashes form that people get back. Doing what I do, I've been in tears more times than I care to remember. When you're in a room and you've got people who've got a much loved family, dog, cat, rat, hamster, whatever it is, they're part of the family. And so you feel their emotion. Although professionally maybe I shouldn't uh, break down in tears, I have done quite a few times because you feel for them. We've had a lovely pig called George. Um, we've had a, a military goat here who was actually um, in a regiment uh, and, and wasn't just like an animal, it was a, actually had a rank. So we can have people that have rats, hamsters, guinea pig, snakes, iguanas, bearded dragons, you know, all sorts of animals. I have people who come along from all walks of life, you know, film stars, um, Olympic athletes, uh, members of parliament, all sorts of people. One of the things that's coming more and more about is people having uh, a tattoo done and that can be of the pet's paw print and some of those people even have uh, the ink uh, impregnated with the ashes of the pet so when they have the tattoo it actually contains some of their pet's ashes. One of the things that people have more recently been asking for is to be cremated here. Now unfortunately I can't cremate people here however what I can do is have their ashes here. So we've now got several humans as well as my mum and dad uh, whose ashes are now here with their animals in our gardens and that's something we're getting increasing inquiries for where people are reserving a spot for when they die so they can come here with their animals. I personally feel that there is a spark of life inside of all of us and inside of them. This boy here is unique. You know, I've had loads of different dogs and there's only one Brax. So what makes him unique? Uh, and I believe that is a spirit that's inside of him. And when we die, that moves on. As well as the physical cremation part here, we actually have a, a spiritual medium that comes here every few months. And he does like a spiritual staircase, if you like. And he comes and helps them move on, any, any animals that, that have got stuck here. And certainly by his account, that there are animals all around. So hopefully right now, we've got some around us. He probably, if there are spirits around us, he'll know about it. Saying that, he loves it here. So. I don't think it's a problem for him. For me, the hardest ever time uh, I had to cremate a pet was my dog, Mikey. Thank you. And um, that was really hard. And I sat on the grass and cried for about half an hour afterwards. And um, yeah, it was really, really difficult. And uh, uh, it reminded me why I do this. We had a gentleman the other day who came to us with his rabbit, who he'd actually kept for two years, frozen. 
um, he actually wanted to uh, make something from the skin. He'd already removed the skin from the pet and then after the event was actually going to get the ashes and get them made into bone china and create something from his pet's ashes. Personally, not my cup of tea at all, um, but it's what he wanted to do. If one piece of advice comes out of this today, it would actually be, do you know what, don't be afraid of planning stuff in advance. If you've got a favourite song, you might want a, a pink coffin, you might want trumpeters outside, you might want a motorbike hearse. Whatever you want, put those things down in writing, put it with your will if you have one, and if you haven't got a will, make one, and um, just prepare so your nearest and dearest they'll know and it will take a weight off their shoulders.